All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse all of these layers. So let's go ahead and hold down shift and click on our top layer and then click on the bottom layer. That's gonna select every one of your layers that you have in your layers palette. Next, we wanna go to layer, arrange, and then reverse. So now all of our images are reversed and ready to go. So let's go ahead and run through the layers that I have right now. So this is basically our flash frame that we use to gauge how powerful the flash needs to be. Um, in this example, it was at one over one or full power with an AD200, uh, Godox AD200. Now, with this, I'm actually can, I can actually use this for a lot of different things. I can use this to get rid of the glare that is in this window right here, and I can also cut down on these deep shadows that are over here and a lot of this uh, these reflections that you see right here at the flash stand so next we can start uh, well, actually finally we can start talking about the ambient which is nothing special it's just really very contaminated with a different variety of colors you see we have blues here blues here then we got our really deep oranges over here it's just not a good look to to send to a client so what we're going to use is all of our flash layers mixed with an ambient to create a very clean very crisp image that you'll be proud to have in your portfolio so basically we're gonna get started right now so I'm gonna start by moving this uh, these I'm sorry I'm gonna start by moving the bottom layer which is our base flash which is just the flash pointed directly up into the ceiling um, kind of angled a little bit away from the room so we don't get any weird fan shadows or harsh fan shadows that you see sometimes in a lot of other real estate photography pictures so what we can do is we're going to move this to the top of these two side to side layers and then we're going to go ahead and blend these now we don't need this one on right now we're just going to worry about the side to side ones so let's go ahead and go down here to our layers palette and we can see that we have this third icon from the left that says add layer mask now what we can do is just click on that layer mask or add layer mask and it'll apply a white layer mask if you ever need to apply a black layer mask just go ahead and hold down alter option and then click that same button and it'll apply a black layer mask but we don't need that right now we just want a white layer mask so next we're gonna do what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use a gradient to get a good base to start with now how we go about using the gradient is very simple and very clean, and I love, 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 love doing this. So let's go ahead and hold down G on our keyboard, and that brings up our gradient tool. Now, my gradient tool is already set up perfectly for this example. So we have foreground to background, which basically is for, the, for this example could work, but we're gonna use from black to white. So black to white basically, hide, reveal, and then you have that smooth gradient uh, in between. So let's go ahead and press OK. And next we can go ahead and start by going from the left all the way to the right. And if you ever want to make a straight uh, or perfectly angled uh, gradient, just hold down Shift and then Release. Now that looks really good for a start but it's not finished it's not where i want the final composite to be so let's go ahead and use our brush tool so we're going to go to our keyboard and we're going to press b that brings up the brush and we want to be a pretty big brush um this one's a little bit too small so holding down control and alter option and then left clicking will allow me to resize this brush by going from left to right if you ever need to change the hardness go up to down and that will allow you to change the hardness but we want a big soft brush and then uh, opacity 100% flow I'm gonna go ahead and say for this example 25% smoothing eh, you don't really need to mess with so let's go ahead and since we're working with black to white we want a white brush 
and then we want a black brush so we're gonna go from right to left it's just kind of the way I do it uh, it's it, it tends to vary sometimes depending on how I put my flashes but typically I like to flat uh, uh, not flash I like to place the flashes from left to right and then when I edit I go right to left I don't know it's just something I do so let's go ahead and hold down alter option and control and resize this brush so we we're a nice big brush and just start brushing out these light stands and what ha what is happening is basically the areas that are flashed for example this if we hold our our uh, actually not hold our hand uh, that's that's what I usually do when I'm teaching people in real life but if we look at this you can see it's a perfect 50 50 split of useless area and useful area so this is what's being used this is what's being erased so when we get rid of it we have a perfect blend if that makes sense so now what we have to do is fix our problem areas such as this reflection uh, this glare and this reflection uh, right here in the window so let's go ahead and use that base flash layer to fix that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and actually duplicate this by holding down command and J that's layer via copy and we're gonna turn this copy layer off real quick and next we can go ahead and hold down alt or option and then add a black layer mask now I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these harsh shadows or not remove them completely just reduce them and just that's a little bit too much let's turn down our flow to about 10 percent and then just kind of brush in those areas I don't want super deep shadows because um, then it's gonna look pretty uh, interesting I would say and then just over there so I don't want to get rid of those reflections just yet I want to actually use our copied layer set to blend mode of darken and what that's gonna do is gonna it's gonna remove anything that's bright and leave everything that's dark so uh, basically we have brightness here underneath that layer it's going to apply the darkness values of the top layer to this uh, bottom layer if that makes sense I don't think it did but let me just show you it anyway so we have glare and reflections uh, in this uh, composite that we have right now so we're gonna take our copied layer and we're gonna apply a uh, black layer mask by holding down alter option and clicking the add layer mask button and we're gonna go ahead and change this to darken by going right here and changing the blend mode to darken so uh, going back to B for brush a little bit smaller brush will do and we're just gonna paint in that area and I think we can go ahead and go back to 25% flow and that's looking pretty good right here I don't want to get rid of all of it because then it's just gonna look unnatural uh, let's go ahead and put that right here I'm gonna get a bigger brush perfect that's looking really good now we've blended all of our flash frames together we need to blend in an ambient to really make this image come to life like right now it's looking a bit artificial so let's go ahead and turn on our ambient layer and we can do this one of two ways if our ambient light is really good and we're not having any color cast issues we can leave our blend mode to normal but for this example the color contamination levels are off the chart so we need to go ahead and apply a black layer mask by holding down alter option and add layer mask and change our blend mode to a luminosity basically what this is doing is it's taking the brightness values of the ambient layer and using that but it's not using the color what it's using the color uh, what it's basically what the color is basically coming from is the layers underneath so we have our color accurate flash layers but we have our brightness from the uh, luminosity ambient layer so basically if I turn this off you can see how the colors have changed completely from this 
to this. It's a massive difference, but it's, uh, I still wouldn't deliver it this way. This is, looks just kind of weird, but we're going to go ahead and turn that back on. And we're going to start by brushing in the areas that we think are looking a bit flashy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to go back to 10% flow and just start getting that natural glare and shadows back into the image. Careful avoiding that lamp, not lamp, what is this called? Ah, oh, what are they called? Fans, there we go, that's looking weird. All right, there we go, and I think, I think we can get a little bit more in here, just a little bit more, that's too much on this, on these cushions. And we're going to go ahead and put some right here. That's a little bit much. It's really to, it's really the amount that you want. So if you're, if you're, uh, if your composite is looking a little bit too flashy, add a little bit more ambient. But if it's looking really natural the way you flashed it, it really depends on what you want to do with it. Sometimes I like to add a lot of ambient and sometimes I add very little ambient. It really just depends on what your situation is. So I think this is looking pretty good. Next we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply a TV gradient to this TV right here since this glare is a little bit distracting. So we're going to go ahead and go to um, from the right the second button right here which is a create new layer button. We're going to create a new layer and then we're going to go to P for pen tool and we're gonna make a path. So path is pretty simple. You just hold down the, uh, not hold down, to click the left uh, button on your mouse and just draw a simple line for your, or simple rectangle for your uh, TV. It's, it's a little bit more complicated if you have objects in front of the TV. In that case, I really just don't do it. Um, I'll try my best to cut down the glare with a flash layer, but for this example, I'm going to show you the TV gradient. So up here we have next to the path, uh, option, we have make selection mask and shape. We want to make a selection and we want to feather our radius to one pixel. Let's go ahead and press OK and go to G for gradient. And we are going to make a TV gradient. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I typically go uh, look at my RGB values and I pretty much make them 20 and then 40. 20 is basically our darker uh, gray value, our darker gray color, and then our second will be 40, which is a little bit uh, brighter. So what we have here is a dark gray to a lighter gray, and I basically just clicked on these little uh, color stops double click them and change the color. If you want to have a different color, it's fine. Um, it really just uh, depends on what you want to do. And if you ever want to save this, like I want to call this TV gradient, I can do that just by pressing OK, or not OK, pressing new, and then you'll have a TV gradient. So I have another one right here. I'm just going to make another one for this tutorial. And we're going to press OK. And since we are working from dark to bright, we want our gradient to be as such. So basically our window is coming from right here. Uh, lights coming from this angle, not this angle. So we want to have our gradient look more realistic than, uh, than it being not realistic, <laughs> if that makes sense. So we're going to start from this corner and just drag it up to that corner. And then Command D will deselect and then you have your perfect uh, TV gradient. Now, if you think this is a little bit too artificial, I, I think it's a little bit artificial. I typically will just lower the opacity down to 90. Now that's looking a little bit better. So that's pretty much it for this. Um, if I wanted to do anything else, I would sharpen it and apply a vignette, but I'm not going to be discussing that in this tutorial series just yet. So let's go ahead and move on to our other examples. All right, let's get into something a little bit more complex. Let's add 
a room that isn't connected to our original space that we're working with. So what we have here is our flash layer that's uh, pretty much just the base flash layer that I take on every one of my shots because this shot is very important for fixing uh, glare and inconsistencies in lighting. So with that out of the way, we need to talk about this room right here. This one right there. Basically, what we're going to be doing is you are going to be doing a little bit of Photoshop magic, if you will. Basically, we're going to be using a blend mode called Lighten. It's basically the opposite of Darken, and you've seen what Darken can do um, for glare, window pulls, and other things like that. So, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to highlight all of our layers by hitting Shift on our keyboard and selecting all of our layers from the top to the bottom, going to Layer, Arrange, and reverse. Now we have our ambient on top and we have our flash layers. So let's go through the flash layers, why don't we? We have our left side lighting the right side. We have our right side lighting the left side. And you can see the problems that we have here. We have some major reflections going on here and here. I don't think they'll be too bad because we have this layer. So again, this is our fixing layer. So Let's go ahead and go to our last side to side layer. We have a big nasty glare right here that I am not a huge fan of when it comes to uh, real estate photography in general. So basically we're going to fi be fixing that in just a second or just a moment. And then we have our another, another shot for just this room back here. It's very important that you just have your flash on for this room. So you can see it's very dark and it's very bright. And if we layer them correctly and blend them correctly, we will have a seamless blend. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. You can see it's a little bit spilling it right here. And we have a little bit of a little bit of a reflection right here. I think we'll we'll fix that in post. Um, not in post, but we'll fix that with one of our layers. I think this one will be fine if we use that. Um, turning those back on. And then we have our ambient layer. Nothing really special about it. Um, we have some really bad flaring right here. Some glare, some blooming. A lot of things you'll see in real estate photography when you start doing um, just single exposures. Um, a lot of purpleness right there. But it's just, it's not a good look. So. We're going to go ahead and fix that. And I went immediately to my actions panel like I usually do. Um, but we're not going to be using actions. We're going to be using manual techniques. So turn off all of our layers. Again, move the base layer on top of these two side to side layers like we did in the last example. And next, we're going to go ahead and apply a layer mask. And we are going to apply a white layer mask. Can, uh, go to control, not control, go to G on your keyboard, and we need to fix our gradient since we have our TV gradient on. We're going to go ahead and go black to white, and we are going to go from left, I'm oh, no, sorry, from right to left on this example because our flash is on the right side and we want to remove it. Let's go ahead and do that. Hold down shift to create a perfectly straight line, and there we go. We have a good base to start with. And we're going to go ahead and brush out these uh, light stands. So we are going to start off with the... Actually, we're, st we're going to start off with the opposite side. Let's do something different. Hold down X, or just click X. Press X. There we go. And we are switching our foreground color to white. If you ever need to change these colors back to the defaults, just click D on your keyboard, and it'll set them back to white and black. So with white... We're just going to paint this out. And I'm going to change my flow back to 20 just to work a little bit faster. So that's looking good. Change our foreground to black by, by hitting X and just brush. So that's looking really good so far. Uh, lighting is looking very good across the board. But we need to fix this glare and this reflection and kind of that window. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and st instead of copying the layer, we're just going to go ahead and just change this to darken. So let's go ahead and 
go to Option or Alt on your keyboard and add a layer mask and it'll apply a black layer mask. So we're going to change our blend mode to darken and we're going to go ahead and resize our brush. Click X on the keyboard and that'll change it to white or whatever color you had before, which should be white. So going to our flow, we're going to change that to 10%. We don't want to work too quickly here and just start by brushing in or brushing out that glare. I'm going to get a little bit in there. There we go. Just to make it a little bit smoother of a gradient. And we're going to go ahead and do this side right here. And we're going to go ahead and do this picture right here and the window as well, or the sliding glass door, I should say. And that's looking really good. So we have no glare anywhere where there shouldn't be glare. So let's go ahead and move on to lighting up this office area. So basically it's so simple guys. It really is dead simple. All we have to do is apply a black layer mask by holding down alter option and then hitting the add layer mask button and then switching the blend mode to lighten. And then we're going to zoom in here, get our brush tool and we're going to go ahead and paint white just right there. And we're going to paint white. Now that's looking really snazzy. I love that that look. Okay, that's looking pretty good. But we have some weirdness where we are kind of glaring up right here. The flash frame could have been placed, or the flash placement could have been better. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer that we worked with, which is our, uh, if I turn this off, is just our base flash layer in darken mode. In normal mode, it's just our base flash layer. So what we can do is just switch that back to darken mode. And then we're going to fill in this layer mask by holding down shift, delete, or shift backspace, and then fill the contents with black. And then we can go ahead and go in here and use our brush and make this a little bit smaller and just brush out any of this that we need to brush out. So that's looking pretty good. And next we can go ahead and apply our ambient, which is always what we want to do. Now our ambient's looking okay, I guess. Um, I do want to add it to the chairs and some areas in the ceiling and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and apply a black layer mask and go to normal and go to luminosity. There we go. And press B on the keyboard. And I'm working a little bit faster than um, the previous example because I don't want to waste your guys' time. Um, so let's go ahead and basically we're going to pick and choose where we want our ambient. I know I really want it up here because it's looking a little bit too dark. So let's go ahead and do that. That's looking a bit too bright. That's looking good. Brighten that area up. Brighten this area up some on the chairs it's a little bit too much and maybe a little bit on the cabinets sorry a little bit on the cabinets there we go it's a little bit too much right there press x swap the foreground background colors and i think that's looking really good so that's pretty much it oh flash shadow i'm gonna fix that So that's looking good. Maybe a little bit too bright on that uh, that light right there. There we go. And that's looking really, really good. And again, I would sharpen this, apply a little bit more contrast, do a vignette, stuff like that. But I would usually do that in Lightroom. This is pure Photoshop talk for, that we're talking about today. Pure Photoshop talk that we're talking about today. Wow, can't words. Anyway, let's move on to the last example, the third and final example. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult, but it's going to be very, very interesting how we tackle it. All right, third and final example. We are going to tackle this very quickly just to show you that this method and this kind of style of editing doesn't take too long to do when you really get into the rhythm of it. So basically, we're going to do our select all layers, go to layer, and arrange, reverse, turn off all these layers, and we're gonna move this uh, base flash layer to the, to the top 
of these two uh, side to side layers. So our side to side layers are pretty standard across the board. There's nothing really special about them. Let's go ahead and add a layer mask right there. Go to G for gradient. We're set to black to white and our black should be over here. So let's go ahead and make our gradient by holding down shift and going from left to right or right to left, I should say. Going to the brush tool, we're going to go ahead and brush out anything that we feel needs to be brushed out. So I'm going to go ahead and change the flow to 20% and change our blend, not blend mode, change our foreground color to be white just so we can tackle this light stand. And then we have a harsh shadow up here that I want to get rid of. Not too big of a fan of that. And that's looking really good. A little, little bit there, a little bit. There. Okay, that's looking really good. Next, we can go ahead and work on that glare. Go ahead and hold down alter option, create a black layer mask and go down to darken blend mode. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger. That's looking good. And I don't think anything else needs to be really touched that much. Um, maybe that right there. That's not looking too good. Okay. That's looking really good. I think the, I think this is looking a little bit too bright. Yeah. Okay. That looks, that looks good. Okay. Now two areas that need to be light and blend moded. Blown, blend moded. Okay. You know what I mean? Basically, we have this area right here, which is our hallway, and then we have an area over here, which is the, I guess, kind of hallway to the garage. We're going to work on this first. Hold down Alter Option, create a black layer mask, change the blend mode to lighten, and we're going to go ahead and change our flow down to 10%, and just start by blending in that area. That's looking really good. Simple enough. And then we're going to do the same thing. Hold down Alter Option, add a black layer mask, go to blend mode, change it to lighten, and we're going to lighten that area. I think it's a little bit too bright on the top. Don't want to distract from the main area. So that's looking really good so far. Everything's lit up, everything's color accurate, but we need to apply our ambient like always. So let's go ahead and do that. Normal, nah, luminosity. We're going to go ahead and change this to a black layer mask and go down to luminosity like we always do. And flow 10% should be good. Change our background color, or foreground color, I'm sorry, to white and just start painting the areas that you want in. So I think that's looking pretty good. A little bit over here, a little bit there. A little bit there, a little bit there. That's a little bit too much on these lights. And I think that's looking pretty good. You see, it doesn't take too long to do when you really start to master it. So, and of course, you don't have to talk while you're doing it. But this is basically how I work um, for real estate. It's very simple. It's very clean. And it gets me the results that I want. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the uh, examples that I've done, the before and afters. And we're going to wrap this up. So let's go ahead and move on to the before and afters.